The Eastern Conference Finals tipped off on Tuesday night, and while the Celtics started the game impressively, Miami dominated the third quarter, led by the third best player in the series, Jimmy Butler, and his game high 41 points. Miami's defense was simply incredible in the second half. Miami took game one, 118 to 107. We'll break down Jimmy's incredible performance, what the Heat did defensively to take control, and what happens next in game two on today's playoff edition of Locked On Heat. You are Locked On Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Heat Nation. It's a Wednesday edition of Locked on Heat, your daily podcast covering all things Miami Heat. However, you may be listening or watching on YouTube, Odyssey, or in your favorite podcast app. Thanks so much for making us your first listen every day. I'm David Ramil, and with me, as always, coming to you from FDX Arena, is my co-host, Wes Goldberg. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals on Tuesday night, and things seem to be going in Miami's favor even before the opening tip with the Heat missing Kyle Lowry. The Celtics would be down two starters of their own as Marcus Smart would be out due to a foot injury and center Al Horford, who entered the league's health and safety protocols. We'll talk about that later on the show. Derek White and Robert Williams, would be who he was working his way back from an injury himself, they'd start in their place, and they made a huge difference early on with their defense. The Celtics started off on a 7-0 run, and Miami, after nearly a week of rest, looked rusty and missed their first seven field goal attempts. Mike Williams was an incredible difference maker, attacking the basket and containing Miami's drives to the paint. The Celtics would score 42 points in the paint and lead in almost every category, assists, rebounds, and they'd hold an eight-point lead at halftime. And then at halftime, something just snapped. Players spoke afterward that they understood they just had to play better. Team leaders spoke probably loudly, and the team responded, bursting out of the gates to start the third quarter on a 22-2 run. Miami took a double-digit lead, and while the Celtics cut the lead to three, Miami responded on both sides of the ball, building a 20-point lead and doing just enough to keep the Celtics at bay, hitting big shot after big shot, forcing a turnover stop, and eventually taking game one, 118-107. We'll talk about Jimmy Butler, who was relentless, according to teammate Bam Adebayo, and stepped up later on. But, Wes, the big story of the game to me was that response in the third quarter after a half in which Miami was thoroughly beaten up by the Celtics. Jason Tatum had 21 points. Williams had 12, and their defense absolutely threw off everything that Miami was doing. Yeah. Their focus on the defensive side of things in the third quarter was outstanding. A 39-14 to 14 third quarter uh, highlighted by a 22-2 to two run to open up that third quarter. Um, just an unbelievable change, just a complete yeah. turnaround. Uh, you know, in that first half, it just looked like the Celtics were the beneficiaries of playing a heightened series against the Milwaukee Bucks. That they they just looked sharper. They looked more. They just looked more ready for the moment than Miami did. And I it kind of felt like the Heat took that first punch and but weren't really like at ready they weren't playing that same level of basketball that the Celtics were playing. They just weren't okay. Like the, they the yeah. Celtics played a much tougher series in Milwaukee and that got them ready for this conference finals. But I didn't think that the Heat would be able to just sort of switch gears in the middle of a game. The way that they had, yeah. uh, you could talk about whatever happened in the locker room at halftime. Udonis Haslam spoke for the team. P.J. Tucker spoke for the team. I don't know how much different that is than any other game, but something right. just flipped in that third quarter. And Jimmy talked about this after the game, just how whenever they get away from their defense powering their offense is when that team is when this Heat team gets in trouble. And they, like you said, they doubled down on defense. They said, okay, everything we need to do is going to start on the defensive end. We're not scoring. We're not making threes. But it starts defensively for them. And uh, what was it? Five blocks, seven steals in the third quarter? In a quarter, Eight David. Turnovers. Like most, Eight turnovers for the Celtics in that quarter. Unbelievable. That would, and seven of them were just – and there, there was this – during that 22-2 run, I mean, you, it was basically crested by this, like, three straight possessions of just – uh, of jumping passing lanes and scoring in transition. It just felt like in that third quarter, Boston couldn't even bring the ball up. Like they couldn't yep. even dribble without somebody on the Miami Heat being in their face, in their grill, in their chest, whatever it was. Um, their level of physicality just ratcheted up in the third quarter in a way that 
I don't think I've seen all season from this Heat team. And this Heat team is a very physical team. So it says a lot. Um, and I know that you, we, we discussed Jimmy Butler a little bit, but he was central to all of that. I mean, jumping those passing yeah, lanes, yeah. It, was, it was him. Um, he, he just, he, he was being more physical, getting downhill, getting to the basket. I mean, it started with Jimmy Butler, and, but you could give so much credit all, all the way around. Yeah, absolutely. In the first half, what I saw anyway was just the floor spacing with Jason Tatum and his playmaking ability. He was really sharp as a passer. His shooting was, again, prolific. He had 21 points in the first half, and it started off with him. The timing, the Celtics were able to control the pace of that first half, and Miami just didn't seem to understand. With Robert Williams out there as a big, leaping, athletic big who could catch lobs, catch rebounds, force different actions defensively, just yeah. changing the complexion. They were expecting Al Horford, who was much more slow, methodical, et cetera, spacing the floor. They weren't expecting a big down low in the paint like Robert Williams, controlling everything like that and being able to – they had to have somebody down to guard him, whether it was somebody – if they were caught in a switch, they'd have Gabe Vincent trying to limit Robert Williams. Not going to work. Max Struess, not going to work. Everybody was thrown off completely – with the presence of Robert Williams. Yeah. And then in the second half, they started off by pressuring Tatum, forcing him into bad passes. At one point, he just kind of threw his hands up as he was looking, maybe crying for a foul, I'll say, and not getting it because Miami's defense was just that good. But then when they would dump the ball off into Williams, Vincent and his help defense to me was really spectacular, like incredible. Like he is just awareness. Every time they would dump mm -hmm. the ball off, he would go and help. They would swat the ball out of Williams' hand. Then it was P.J. Tucker. Bam, somebody. Bam was much more active in denial, kind of similarly to what we saw him do against Joel Embiid in the Sixers series. And they were just trying to limit what Williams could do. They were just pressuring the ball, forcing those turnovers. Completely different game in the second yeah. half. It was un yeah. incredible. incredible. No, that's, that's It's really well put. Um, it, it was just it was Boston controlling, dictating the game yep. in the first half. And Miami yep. with its ball pressure – uh, and, and you mentioned like Robert Williams getting into the paint deep post position in that first half with that ball pressure, meeting them at 30 feet at half court, sometimes at full court, whatever, whatever it was kind of throwing some zone at them a little bit more. They just took away some of that, not only from our Williams, but from Jason Tatum as well. And, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden Boston's offense just couldn't really flow. It couldn't function. And, you know, next thing you know, like you've got the Celtics kind of trying to run things off to the side of the court, trying to stay away from the middle. And now you've got Celtics players just stepping out of bounds, right? Trying to dribble it away, keep the ball away from Miami's defenders. Uh, they just completely flipped the script in that yep. in that second half. And um, Jimmy Butler in particular in that second half was just unbelievable. Um, you know, the Heat don't win this game without him, obviously. 41 points on 12 of 19 shooting, 17 of 18 from the free throw line. He said after the game, Nick, you know, you, he looked at his box score and it's very impressive. The only kind of blemish on it is the fact that he went 0 for 2 from three point range. He said next game, <laughs> his goal is to go 0 for 0 from three point range, which is an absolute challenge to this Celtics defense. This vaunted, heralded celebrated Celtics defense he basically <laughs> yeah. just said I don't even need to take threes against this team the way that I was getting to the paint in that second half and if the sec if game two looks anything like it did in the third quarter he's gonna be right David he's going to be correct um he the Heat did a lot of really interesting X's and O's stuff that I will I want to dive into like tomorrow and film but one of the things that just stand out is the amount of uh ball screens that they ran for Jimmy involving guards, particularly Gabe Vincent, to kind of yep. get him switched on to Peyton Pritchard and 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 favorable matchups for him. But there was other stuff that was happening there, too. Like, they were running Jimmy Butler off a lot more off-ball screens, allowing him to establish deep post position in the paint before even getting the ball, right? It was almost like what the Sixers try to run with Joel Embiid normally, right? Where they're just – whatever they're doing in the first few seconds of the shot clock is to get Embiid into a favorable post position. The Heat were doing some of that stuff with Jimmy Butler. That's not necessarily new. But it was new for from the first half to the second half for this Heat team. A lot of X's and O's stuff that we could dive into. A lot of adjustments that will have to be made by Boston from games one to two. But uh, the, just the fact that Miami knew exactly what they needed to do. All right, let's feed Jimmy. Let's get him to be that score that we need him to do. And let's 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 put some ball pressure on the Celtics team who we want to challenge to out-dribble us. Because that was the one thing that they made. They kind of made the Celtics look limited offensively like I, I couldn't help but think in that second half like 
I, I don't know that Boston has that many ball handlers. I know that they didn't have Marcus Smart, and that was a big deal, but um, right. they really they kind of made them look like a pumpkin a little bit. I, uh, I don't want to turn this into Miami's best player versus Boston's best player because I know a lot of Twitter has been about that uh, today. But it's a big story. It is a big story. But 41 uh, points for Jimmy, 29 points for Jason Tatum. Jimmy Butler well, outplayed Jason Tatum. 21 points. 21 points in the first half, only nine points. Yeah. One of seven shooting in the second half for Jason Tatum, several turnovers. All of his points, I think almost all of his points coming at the free throw line because of some, in my opinion, questionable calls. I don't think the calls on Jimmy were questionable. I know Celtics fans will make that about the, the game. Nah, whatever. I, I, I don't, it's not worth getting into. He earned those calls on many occasions, powered himself to the line, drew the foul. Uh, just He knows what to do. The, 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 the up fake was working. Dwayne Wade esque, yeah. shall we say? He got everybody yeah. to bite on that jump pick, and yeah. it was uh, it was a effective tool, and he utilized it wisely. Did, we'll get we, into we said, a little bit. Of, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, one last point on that. I mean, we said yeah, no, going sure. into the series, Jimmy Butler had to go toe to toe with Jason Tatum, right? And you and right. I expected him to do that. This was not. I didn't expect this. Okay, I don't think anybody could have said they expect this. Forty one points, twenty nine points for Jason Tatum. There is so much to get into in this game. But fundamentally, that is why the Heat won this game. No doubt. Uh, well, we'll talk a little bit about some of the other players that stepped up alongside Jimmy Butler when we give out our credit cookies in the next segment before looking ahead to Game 2 and possible adjustments, including the potential return of Marcus Smart and Al Horford and how that might change things for Miami. But before we do that, just want to tell you about a new sponsor of the show, something that I've been using lately, a product that I've been proudly taking called AG1. I just wanted to feel better. We talked about it on the show before. You don't really have a lot of time to devote to getting the right supplements or maybe even finding all the time that you want to to exercise and get your lifestyle to change to be the better person that you want to be. So you know what? You take the right supplement, and that's where AG1 really comes in because you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food supplements, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. You just get a scoop of a kind of a citrusy flavor. You just add it to your morning water. And you feel great the rest of the day. It starts you off right, and you feel great throughout the rest of the day. It's a special blend of ingredients to help your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery focus, all good things, all the things. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Tons of people take some kind of vitamin, and it's important to choose one with high-quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. That's where AG1 comes in, and it's cheaper than getting all those other supplements yourself, and it's environmentally sustainable. So for every purchase... Athletic Greens will also donate to organizations helping to get nutritious food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry here in the U.S. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NBA network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NBA network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily in nutritional insurance. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen. Make sure to go check out the Locked On NBA Big Board. Host Raphael Barlow from NBA Draft Junkies and the author of the NBA Big Board newsletter, Gives fans an in-depth look into the NBA draft. He's got mock drafts, play rankings, and big boards. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, Dave, it's that time. After a heat win, we've got that winning feeling, and it's time for some credit cookies. And I think we could start somewhere fairly obvious. I just don't know how many cookies to give to Jimmy Butler. It feels like this was a game where he can get all 10 of them. Um, but there's other yeah, cookies that we have I, to give out. Like, we have to be – I mean, I don't know why we don't well, – Let's start here. What kind of cookies are we getting? Uh, you know, because of the difference, first half, second half, let's go with a black and white cookie because it was a black and white game. Very, very different styles of play. Very, very different halves. Okay. So I like the dichotomy represented by the cookie and tonight's game. Um, I'm going to go with four to Jimmy Butler. It doesn't feel like enough. Too low. Too low. Got to go five. five. I mean, five. Give everybody else five. one has stepped up, but five to Jimmy because okay. he was the second. Five to Jimmy Butler. Tonight. 41 points, 12 of 19, 17 of 18 from the line, nine rebounds, five assists, four the stat steals, line doesn't three even blocks. It. Yeah. No. It's not even, yeah, the stat line doesn't even tell the full picture. Like when you saw Jimmy's performance, particularly, look, in the first half, I'll admit, there was some 
concern slash frustration there because this was more of the passive version of Jimmy where he's kind of saying, I've got to get everybody else going. And, of course, then all of a sudden Boston builds that double-digit lead, and you're wondering, well, when is it time for you to step up and realize right. that you can't just afford to let Boston control the pace of the game? Well, that time was the third quarter, and that's when he actually he absolutely put his imprint, his unique imprint on the game and became, just became a dominant force to be uh, unstoppable. He said after the game that he was asked about scoring 41 points, and he just basically said, I don't care. Yeah. And that's kind of sticking with me because I don't know Crazy. what level of BS meter the I don't care. Of course you care a little bit that you scored 41 points and you outplayed Jason Tatum. Like, I know he doesn't want to say that and he won't say that, but he has to. He has to care a little bit. But I don't know that it's as high up on the BS meter as maybe some people think. I do think that he really is just doing – He's he making the most of the opportunities, right? He is, and it sounds so cliche, and I really don't want to be like heat culture guy all the way because it, it just sounds so cliche, right? He like, is. You just like look he talks at, about the organization. He talks about doing it for his teammates. It's like, I don't know. Again, I don't know. You want to believe just, it at, this, at the same time. But, you, but, like, you, but I don't even care about what he says is what I'm trying to say. Like, I, yeah. I, there's a level of – like, it's everything he says is, falls on the BS meter somewhere. Right. right. I, but I, like I said, I don't think it's as much BS as some people from on the outside think it is because you watch him play and it does feel that way. Right. Like he only took 19 shots to get these 41 points. Most of them came at the free throw line. Most players don't want to do that. OK. In today's NBA, most guys want to take 14 threes and get their points that way. That's not Jimmy's game. And you just looked at the way that it shifted. It wasn't like he started. I think in the first half, he was trying to play like the Kyle Lowry role, get guys involved a little bit, right. sort of feel out the Celtics defense. And then in the second half, he was like, uh, that's not what this game calls for. It needs me to be, go be a scorer. It needs me to go get into the paint and get Depot's position and everything like that we were talking about. And he just did it because the team needed him to do it. So um, just we could talk about Jimmy Butler on and on and on. But we've got to give three credit cookies to Bam Adebayo. I think Ooh. that might seem like a lot to people who are just looking at the box score. No, but I, I promise I, I, I you that it's coming. not enough. It's not enough. Yeah. First of all, those blocks in the third quarter were just Momentum insane. Change. We can like let's just put it on the defensive player of the year highlight reel for next season. I don't. I'm, I'm so done like with the, the people. He was the best defender on the court tonight. I know that Marcus Smart didn't play. It doesn't matter. Bam Adebayo is the best defender in this series. I don't think it's close because of what we saw today. It doesn't necessarily mean that the Heat are going to have the best defense every single game, right? I'm, I don't want to disrespect the Celtics defense. It is a really good defense. But Bam Adebayo as a singular defender is the best defender in this series. And I we said this going into this series. Bam needed to be one of the best three players in this series for the Heat to go to the NBA Finals. Tonight he was. It, again. Yep. We're talking about formulas. Jimmy Butler going toe to toe with Jason Tatum blew that out of the water more than toe to toe. He had a foot to Jason Tatum's toe. Okay, Bam Adebayo was the second best player in this game. He was unbelievable. I I don't know. I don't know if ne that's necessarily the case. I I, I guess it third is. best player. Whatever. I mean, if you want to put him behind Tatum, is that the idea? No, no, well, I mean, yes, there's that. I, I, well, I, even on the Miami side, I, I can't negate, and I know we'll talk about him soon, like the impact of Gabe Vincent. I thought he played an instrumental role. And I think part of it is the fact that maybe I, even you and I were talking about Adebayo scoring having to be at a higher level. It's not that he was necessarily shying away from the Robert Williams matchup, but I think he was also aggressive in spots. He just wasn't he wasn't actively looking to score. And he only I guess, took four shots. He only took four shots. Right. He went to the line five times. Uh, they're going to need more from him in this series than that. Eventually, points. I think. Yeah, I think with, if if Horford's out there, I think it's a completely different mindset from Adebayo. Uh, not necessarily an easier matchup, but I think he just wasn't expecting Williams. Uh, you know, again, the news came in just hours before the tip. Adebayo spoke about it. He said he didn't have to change his approach. I'm not sure how realistic that. Is. Again, falling somewhere yeah. on the BS meter. Uh, you're not expecting the shot blocking, the length, the athleticism of, that Williams represents. And then all of a sudden, you know, he just realizes, hey, you know what? I don't have to score as much. Why? Because Jimmy's carrying that particular torch. I can just do, well, hell, everything else. And he did. He defended a high level, playing a lot of denial against Williams in that second half. Yeah. Blocking, blocking shots, breaking up passes, getting a hand on things, diving yeah. to the floor. Incredible effort from him. Four. How many? He only he didn't get credit for any steals, but he had a few deflections in that game. Um, I'm actually surprised he didn't. I guess because like other players 
recovered the loose ball that he created so that he doesn't well, get Well, the that, scoring like, was a little bit off one... because Gabe Vincent. Gabe Vincent got charged for three blocks, and I think they were mostly steals. At least the way yeah. it looked. Yeah, Struis got credit for two steals, and I think both of them were created by Bam's like, swipes at the ball. But whatever. Right. Like, again, that's why I'm saying that the box score doesn't show how good Bam was in this game. He wasn't even like a factor offensively on the box score, but – what how much offense he created with his defense was the ent- was so much of the reason that the Heat were able to go on that third quarter run. Um, so three credit cookies to Bam. That only leaves two left. So unfortunately, I'm going to give one to Gabe, even though it doesn't seem like enough. But whatever. Like this is just this is the game that we created, and this is, these are the rules that we created. Uh, and then one to Tyler Hero. Gabe Vincent, 17 points. Tyler Hero, 18 points. Sort of. Tyler Hero was the guy that stabilized the offense in that first half when it felt like the Heat's. Le- deficit could slip into unmanageable areas uh hero came in midway through that first quarter and miami just ran a bunch of pick and roll with him especially with bam dribble handoffs off of bam and and miami's offense stabilized and sparked and then took off in that second half and then gabe vincent was just so big in the second half not only from a scoring perspective five and from three point range but setting screens for jimmy just having a two-man game with Miami's best player, he stepped up in a big way in Lowry's absence. Yeah, uh, incredible performance. Really, really good. Like, I, I keep using the word, and I don't think it, it – it just the, – the mood of the game changed so completely from a team in the first half that just looked like they were overwhelmed and not prepared for, you know, Boston's defense. And you're seeing it on Twitter. You're seeing it from the crowd. Even they're just not prepared for, for this kind of just response. And then all of a sudden in the third quarter, things just changed completely. And Gabe was at the forefront alongside Jimmy, alongside Bam. We can't give everybody credit cookies, but we'll shout them out anyway. P.J. Tucker, yep, just a big impact from him emotionally, I think, as well as defensively on the floor. He got yep. hurt in the first half, rolled his ankle in a halftime. Uh, he looked at Spolstra and said, you know what, don't even think about taking me out. I'm going to play. He went out there, and just that kind of emotional leadership, I think, is such a huge boost. All of his yep. teammates spoke about it. I know you were kind of leading the, the charge there in terms of those, those questions. But just everybody responding so favorably. Hey, Jimmy Butler saying, I was not prepared at this point in my career to fall in love with a basketball player, but he just appreciates <laughs> so much of what of what PJ can do. That was great. Uh, I like the Dwayne Dedman minutes uh, a lot. I think he came in there and was uh, a big body. I think he, he held his own to some extent. I, I really liked also Caleb Martin coming plus in six, there. Plus 16, Dwayne Dedman. That's a good, that's a good shout out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Caleb Martin had a, a nice, uh, he had a three pointer. Uh, a miss while well, block duck or was it Aaron Nesmith? Yeah, had a big block on him. I mean, so okay minutes dunk. from Caleb, uh, but block. a Victor Oladipo I think also provided a spark in his 15 yep. minutes. Didn't have his shot Max, falling. Max, yeah, yeah, Max absolutely. In the, in the second Max half, Leo making threes. I mean, everybody, you know, everybody played well. I mean, there's there was one, two, three, four, five guys in double digits, and the guy that wasn't was PJ Tucker, who is, doesn't need to be in double digits in his defense. On right. Tatum in particular, uh, in the second half and during that third quarter was huge. Um, yeah, an all around. I you said it before. I said it before. It's still just I. I don't know that. Maybe it's just the highs of the fumes that are still here at FTX Arena from that from that blowout. But um, I, I have never. I don't. I don't know that I've seen such a difference in mood, in temperature, in temperament, in just everything from that first half of the site. From the first half, that looked like a team not ready to play in the Eastern Conference Finals against a team that was really ready to play in the Eastern Conference Finals. And they just completely flipped that in the second half. Unbelievable. It's not the same pattern, not the same style, and certainly not even the same team. But it reminds me a little bit of the way the big three era Miami Heat would respond, where they could be down by a certain amount, and then all of a sudden, well, you know what? They wouldn't be. They would just take it up to a whole other level. It was phenomenal. Uh, to see that kind of change take place uh, in the course of a game, to see Miami – Go on a 22 to 2 run where they just absolutely throttled whatever Boston was doing and took control of the game from that point forward. And then be able to continue in spurts throughout the rest of the second half. That was a true control, uh, you know, just a controlled pace of the game and just a dominant display from them. Uh, even yep. without, you know, Boston missing two starters, even without Kyle Lowry on the Miami end of things. But we'll see what happens in game two. We'll talk about that in the next segment, how both teams could potentially respond and how things might change for the next game. But before we do that, just a reminder that Built Bar is the sponsor of this show. They've got their new birthday cake puffs. Imagine dipping your finger into a plastic tub of birthday cake frosting. I guess that's a thing. I've never really been a frosting kind of guy, 
But I know that some people just love the birthday cake frosting. My wife, when she was pregnant, that's all she wanted. Was birth? It was just cake frosting. That's all she wanted. And you know what? She didn't allow herself to do it, unfortunately. But you know what? If we had these birthday cake puffs, she could have got exactly what she wanted. A, a great treat, an indulgent treat that tastes great without the guilt that might be associated with eating a whole tub of cake frosting, which is something most, well, some pregnant women would do. And anyway, uh, it, they taste great. They're delicious. So many delicious flavors to choose from. Go to built.com. And you can get a mixed box with all of your favorites. And again, they're just low in calories, high in protein, low in sugars. They've got all the nutrients you're looking for in a protein bar without sacrificing any of the taste. That's Built Bar. That's what they're known for. And so you should be getting them too. By go to Built.com right now and use the promo code LOCK15 and you get 15% off your order. But only if you go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCK15 will you get 15% off your next order of Built Bars. And just another sponsor of today's show, Rock Auto. Look. I know I've said it before, just last week, just last week, there was a part of my wife's car that needed replacing. I, I didn't even know this. Apparently, if you're gas cap, and everybody's got, got a gas cap unless you've got an electric vehicle. If you've got a gas cap after time, it starts to slowly erode. You could lose, like come on, cars lose millions of gallons of gas, and it's way too expensive to be throwing gas away. If it's just slightly eroded on your gas cap, you could be throwing away dollars down the drain. So you know what? I looked it up and I saw that the gas cap could be easily replaced. I found the part in minutes, I mean, maybe not even minutes. Like I entered the make and model of the, my wife's car, got the gas cap that I needed, delivered within the next couple of days safely, soundly, didn't have to go to a store, didn't go through any hassle, saved so much time and money. And that's really what it's all about. And, and you know what? I didn't have to take my wife's car into a shop or anything like that. She kept saying, oh, go to the dealership, go to this the mechanic, et cetera. I said, you know what, honey? I got it. Don't worry about it. You can do it too. If you go to rockauto.com and, and you know just find the parts that you're looking for on their easy to navigate website. And once you find all the parts available for your car or truck, go to the section that says, how did you hear about us? Which is I did. And I wrote the phrase locked on. So they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. That's rockauto.com. Just a reminder that you can always reach us via email at lockdownheat at gmail.com or via Twitter using the hashtag Ask All Heat. Be sure to please subscribe to the show. We're so close to a goal that we set when we first started the show on YouTube of reaching 3,000 subscribers. If you're watching this show, and I'm sure a lot of people are because the numbers bear it up, just hit the subscribe button because we want to continue to provide the great content that you're looking for as the Miami Heat continue their push to the Eastern Conference Finals. And we'll be there every step of the way. And the next step for Miami, winning game two. What do they do in the next game to continue this pace? Well, let's start with the injury issue because I think at that point, that's really the the kind of factor hovering yeah. over everything is the the unknown. We're not sure what's yeah. going on with Kyle Lowry, although it didn't seem like he was exactly missed, at least not in the second half. I'm sure they would have liked to have had his presence, his leadership in the first half. But Lowry, no update from the team. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say he's still out. Because you won one game, you could probably hold court in game two, hold on to home court advantage in game two. And if that's the case, then you don't need to push him. Why? Because as we've mentioned all along, there's a bigger picture here. It's not just about winning the Eastern Conference Finals. It's about winning the whole damn thing. And you need Kyle Lowry for that. So if I had to guess right now, I don't think Kyle makes it back in time for Thursday's game two. What do you think? I'm with you. I mean, he was ruled so, uh, uh, out so early for this one that it would be almost weird if he were suddenly upgraded to even, you know, uh, questionable Problem. for right. game two. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, I'm w I don't expect him to be back for game two. Uh, and now we sort of have this weird race between Kyle Lowry's hamstring and Al Horford being in health and safety protocols, right? Uh, I don't know how long Marcus Smart will be out. It seems likely that he could be back for game two. Uh, I don't yeah. know if Ime talked about that post game. I haven't gotten a chance to look at the transcripts yet. But, um, you know, if Marcus Smart's available, that's a bit, that's, you know, adjustment number one for the Celtics. You get your starting point guard back, which is a big deal. Um, and then, yeah, after that, we're kind of looking at, all right, when does Boston get Horford back? When does Miami get Lowry back? And how big of a factor do those two experienced players play in this series? I, I think both of them have a very important roles to play for their respective teams. Um, and that sort of becomes now sort of, uh, uh, you know, a, a B storyline going on. But outside of the injuries, um, like I said, I got to go. I, I'm really excited to kind of dig into the film on this one. But, um, 
you know, I, I think what Miami did. To you, what is it that you're looking forward to the most as far as like you keep talking about the film? What is it that you're looking forward yeah. to the most? Just how, number one, Miami, it appeared like they changed their scheme a little bit, that they weren't so willingly to switch defensively, yeah. um, that they were trying to get Bam back to kind of get back onto Boston's bigs. And then for the Celtics, it didn't, I don't know if they changed anything, but they, they were so willing to just drop against Miami's pick and roll, which is something I wrote about. And we talked about like, that was the way that they've played Miami all season long. I wonder if they try to change that because that opened up so many avenues for Miami's offense. So I think from, if look, the Celtics are the team that lost this game. It's on them to make the adjustments. Right. And then Miami has to be ready to make some counter punches at halftime or whatever, if they need to, but, um, I would expect the Celtics to seriously look at how they drop against those Tyler Hero pick and rolls and then how they guard those screens that involve Jimmy Butler and another guard because Jimmy was just able to go at Naismith, Pritchard, like whoever he wanted. He was able to just pretty easily target those guys. I don't. I know Boston wants to switch everything. I went into this series. Uh, I was talking to a friend of the show, Michael Pina, before uh, on the sideline before the game started. And I was like, it kind of feels like uh, there's going to be a little bit of a war of attrition here of, Okay, when does each defensive when when does each coach sort of coach sort of ditch what they want to do defensively and adjust mm-hmm. to what this series will demand of them defensively? It was going to happen. You kind of come out game one, let's do our base thing, and then go from there. I think the Celtics are already maybe in a place where they have to make some changes. That's fair. I, I think Miami. I mean, we're talking about changes, but it's kind of felt like Miami just and Spo to his credit, uh, and we he probably deserves some credit cookies as well. Like he made the adjustment of of how they approached the team defensively in the third quarter. Like I mean, the, yeah. the things they oh, were he made the in game adjustments. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, he deserves some credit for that. So I, I'm 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 curious to see and look. Spo. Yeah, Cook, we'll find some. Three. We'll find some in the in the couch cushions, and there's some. Well, I can go look. Maybe I had a chocolate chip cookie from the media room at halftime. Oh, that's um, nice. So, but that I'll, I'll dedicate that one to Spo. How's that? <laughs> and look, I, I don't want to completely overlook the importance of Horford and Smart here because I think with Smart We're out there players. in particular, yeah, I think it's with Smart out there in particular, the, the defense is just at a higher level. Derek White was great defensively. But he just doesn't do the same thing as an offensive player that Smart does. And then once you're using his minutes up, you've got to go heavily with Peyton Pritchard to want to playing 30 minutes. And look, maybe some of those long bombs of his kind of, you know, were momentum factors in Boston's favor. But overall, yeah. he finished 4 of 11 from three-point range. Had 18 points, so it's not like he was a bad showing. Uh, Neesmith probably doesn't even play if you've got Horford out there. And Daniel yep. Ty certainly doesn't play 20 minutes, so... Things yeah, before you move off the smart thing, too, it's a good – Derek White and Peyton Pritchard in particular, like, both of them, I thought, started the game with so much force, so much energy. Like, Pritchard was going basket for basket with Tyler Hero. Uh, Derek yeah. White was chasing Tyler Hero all over the court, fighting over screens, doing a really good Marcus Smart impression. And then in the second half, I, I don't know, like, this is why Marcus Smart is such a special player is because he could just do that for yeah. almost 40 minutes a game. And I thought Derek White, who played 29 minutes, he just – it. it I, I just don't think he could do it the entire game. Right I don't know. I, yeah. yeah, it felt like it, didn't it? And then with Pritchard, I guess you can't really expect him to just do that for an entire game. Um, you know, he's a guy that is, you know, he's streaky. He has he has spurts of offense, and he's important for Boston in that way. But he can't be relied on in that way either. Um, yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, I think the biggest adjustment for Boston is getting their guys back. And then for Miami, it's just being ready for those counter punches uh, that they're going to need to have. Yeah, I, I don't want to go out on a limb and make any more predictions or anything like that. But I mean, again, to, to, to kind of put a cherry on everything, Miami has always shown the capacity to understand what's at stake. They're, it's seven, they're seven games away from their goal, seven wins away from their goal. And while they they don't necess, they didn't necessarily get lucky, they, they did what they were supposed to. Again, they won in the home court because that's what you do. I think they understand what's at stake in game two, and they'll go with that same kind of approach now that they've got some film, now that they understand – the challenge of Robert Williams, they prepared, they adjusted. I think they'll handle it a little bit better in game two, and we'll see whether or not Boston gets a boost for the return of Smart and or Horford. So we'll talk about that in tomorrow's episode as well. And then, of course, we'll be there 
for game two on Thursday, as uh, hopefully you will too, if you can subscribe to the show and make sure to continue to support us and everything that we do throughout Miami's playoff run. Uh, you Thank you so much to all of you who have subscribed and are making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Lockdown NBA, from the first jump ball of the play-in uh, tournament to the last possession of the finals. Lockdown experts will take you deep inside the playoffs with insight and analysis affecting all 30 teams. Although, you know what? I did not realize the draft lottery today. A big swath of NBA Twitter and fandom really, really concerned about the draft lottery on a night when Miami was playing game one instead. I don't know, man. I, I'm just so glad that the Heat don't have a draft lottery pick to worry about. But anyway, this is David Ramil signing off for now. Thanks so much for joining me, boys. Wrap it up, E. Go listen to Locked On Panthers.